let's talk about Bitcoin a little bit. I had, uh, you know, written about this the other day. For those that that, uh, that don't follow uh, uh, Pro, you know, we have obviously uh, an entire cryptocurrency team and I contribute to these articles daily. So I wrote about Bitcoin yesterday. I was a little bit concerned about the short-term price structure, uh, but yet it hasn't really given any real evidence of breaking down just yet. And we really need to get down under almost 26,981 for this to turn negative. For the time being, it is consolidation. It is choppy, but it's incorrect to really label anything a head and shoulders pattern without the neckline being broken. So, you know, we did have a pretty big cycle that hit on the 27th of April, and that does look to have occurred right near the lows. And so we saw a little bit of a surge to 30, and now back and filling. He will be 30 on the upside. That was the highs from last Wednesday. Uh, above that would have very little resistance up at 31 and should get up near 34 to 36. Now that's an area that I think is going to be probably pretty high risk. A lot of my cycles actually went down in the month of May, but they also went down for equities into mid-May. So if that inverts and we start to see a move up, that'll be something to pay attention to. But in general, you know, when you look at various areas of Fibonacci resistance, you know, 35.8 is going to be really a 3 8 retracement right near 0.382. It also lines up just above those prior lows from last January. So that's really my upside target. Um, I had listed targets for the year as being right near 40,000. And, you know, I'm skeptical we get there right away. But I do think that, um, you know, for those that want to, it's the, the trends are pretty neutral right now. Equities have tried to sell off, but really didn't make much of this today. And so if equities can rally sharply after the Fed, I think crypto probably does the same. So keep a close eye on uh, 30,000. Above that, you would certainly want to lay long. Uh, you would want to be really out under 26,981. And that's about the best we can say thus far, given this choppy range. Uh, for Ethereum, you know, this has actually been an underperformer to Bitcoin. Uh, you look at just the ratio of, say, BTC to ETH, and you see that, you know, really since March, it really has underperformed, but hasn't been dramatic. And the range in general for, you know, both of these have been pretty neutral going back, you know, over the last year or so. Uh, not a huge fan of favoring one over the other on an intermediate term time frame. Um, you know, I think, you know, if this were to get back up above 16, this this ratio, then I think that clearly would favor uh, Bitcoin. For the time being, you know, Ethereum, you know, honestly doesn't look too unattractive after its breakout attempt on good volume and now it's pulling back and trying to stabilize. Uh, the key for, for those that are long is going to be 1787 and under that would certainly change things. Um, you know, that would cause a pullback at least down to 1724 more likely 1600 that's the area you'd want to really look to buy dips i think in the weeks and or months to come that's probably a maximum move down to 1475 but you know the charts have gotten a lot better in both of these and it's right to respect the fact that they've shown pretty decent rallies and, and they've stalled out a little bit but that hasn't been you know all that negative so uh that's just something to uh consider